<laughs> there. Uh, well, hi everyone. That's four minutes before we get started. Ah, uh, pum pum pum. Okay, how can we check out here? Uh, how many live streamer visitors we have here? Hmm. Anybody here? Ah, yeah, here we go. Okay, Toby, Clary, C. Clary, okay, Alicia, Neil. So many people already. Okay, hi from England. Okay, uh, let me start a little bit. Um, that's actually hard for me. Because this is my first stream ever in English and well that would be maybe even more um, um, questions to you guys uh, rather than to me I will of course I will try to answer all of them but now uh, what I want to do is to collect all the feedback from you from our audience um, to clearly understand what next streaming uh, topics uh, you would like to hear from us because we know a lot about 360 shooting and a lot about um, 360 photographs and about uh, shooting from drones and from helicopters and many many other things so we are waiting for officially 8 p.m. it's my time uh, but mm, supposed to be the different time zones uh, at your places. Um, okay, uh, just for those who uh, joined me, uh, I'm sitting here in my house in Moscow region uh, in Russia and I'm self-isolating. I mean, I'm trying to keep quarantine and not going out uh, for most of the normal reasons, maybe only to buy some goods and some everything. So everything you see behind me, this is part of my house. Uh, maybe it would be a little bit different to show a lot of different um, equipment stuff, but uh, surely I have something, some cameras with me today. And you see it's 360 cameras behind me. And you also will see some other nice stuff today, like this and this. Um, and we are still waiting for uh, 8 p.m. my time. Uh, okay, so I see so many, so many messages. Wow, I couldn't even expect that there are so many. So many. <laughs> okay. Drums are loud. <laughs> it should be zero, zero, zero. Okay. I also will talk about these books and maybe even these books and also about this camera. And about the small one camera. And we also have a headset today. And we also have the dolly today, the small one. <laughs> and I also bring some big piece of equipment here, like this one. Okay, 8 o'clock, Moscow time. Hello everyone once again, my name is Sergei Semenov and I am CEO, the director of uh, AirPano. Um, sometimes we use the uh, word company, but uh, among the friends, about among our audience, I would better say that we are the project. So we are the uh, group of authors who are creating this uh, website. 
hairpanda.com and YouTube channel and Facebook channel and uh, other uh, social networks channels and we are shooting 360 photographs we are shooting 360 videos and we're flying the, our drones um, and we are publishing this every week uh, on Wednesdays on our website and our uh, social networks so stay tuned subscribe to our channels and um, let me first of all uh, make some small introduction that uh, today I'm going to speak about the filming uh, Aerial 360 Rio de Janeiro because today we publish on our YouTube channel uh, a first part of this uh, beautiful documentary video um, about uh, Rio de Janeiro from above and from the ground uh, but as well as this topic I also would like to talk to you to listen uh, to your questions and maybe plan another, another um, videos, another streams and maybe also some tutorials uh, what are we doing, how are we doing, what equipment we're using, what drones are we flying, what software for stitching all of this and photoshopping and post-production we're using so anything you, your, your thing is interesting for you and you want to listen um, how we're doing this is more than welcome just right here on the on the side of this in the chat and um, next uh, next streams or next uh, our live we will uh, cover and these topics as well plus of course we are traveling a lot um, last year uh, I traveled maybe every month two or three times to different countries and we also would love to share with you guys uh, some tips and tricks uh, some other things uh, how is going on abroad how to shoot abroad uh, maybe what uh, special things uh, or tricks you have to know to bring the equipment or to fly the equipment uh, to fly the drones in some countries or just the normal things uh, how to negotiate with the um, uh, with the people in distant places who are not used to to tourists or to foreigners and even how to survive in, in a tent in Algeria Sahara Desert so everything uh, like this, like these topics, um, I could um, cover in my future streams. So if you are interested in anything like that, um, just shoot here, right um, uh, here. Okay, and let me do the, the first thing. Uh, since I claim that this, is, uh, this stream is about filming uh, IRL 360 in Rio de Janeiro, I want to share with you and to show you right on my screen um, the beautiful video that we shot there uh, this is 360 video so I will show it to you and maybe do some comments um, <laughs> and here we go so now we are flying with a helicopter close right by in front to of us, there is the Concavado okay. mountain we have the a voice over here at the altitude of 709 meters, the statue of Christ the Redeemer was established. Below the mountain is the central part of the city. To the right, in the distance, there are the beaches of Ipanema and Copacabana. And beyond Batafago Bay, you can see another highland, Sugarloaf Mountain. At the foot of the statue, there is an observation deck. Around 2 million people visit this place annually. You can get there by car, bus or mini train. There are special magical moments when a cloud goes through the mountain. The city disappears like this, like here. and you seem to float in the sky. Look at the head of the monument, there is a staircase there. But only technical staff can use it, while visitors are not allowed there. The construction of the statue lasted for around nine years and ended in 1931. Now it is the symbol of Rio and the entire Brazil. In 2007, the monument was named one of the new seven wonders of the world. 
This place offers fantastic views. Okay, guys, I will come back to the camera. Let me switch it on again. Okay, here we go. Um, so that was our video. It's just the first part that we wanted uh, to show you today. Uh, that is mainly about the Christ the Redeemer statue. As you may notice, that was shot with a helicopter, with a big helicopter, a real one, not a drone, uh, and uh, from the ground. Uh, we were using uh, this uh, Insta Pro 2 uh, camera to shoot that. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm trying also to catch up some questions if you have already here, so I can maybe answer them uh, in your way, but uh, no questions at the moment. Okay, I'll tell you uh, some interesting facts and some uh, other things about this shooting so we planned it actually carefully uh, from um, and we shot it in December last year when the travel was uh, very easy um, of course Rio de Janeiro is uh, a beautiful city but at the same time is a little bit uh, dangerous and uh, for those who don't know where to go uh, it's not safe uh, totally 100% safe in some areas uh, while well, in the other areas is quite good and uh, friendly to the tourists. But uh, since we're bringing a lot of different equipment and stuff and wanted to do 100% guarantee a very good video, we uh, uh, contacted our best friend in Brazil, okay, one of the best, uh, is Ayrton360. And he's a local guy, he's a photographer, he's 360 photographer, and you saw uh, his panorama taken from the shoulder of the Christ the Redeemer uh, right in this video, he did this. And of course he was the best person who can um, help us uh, and handle some things uh, in Rio de Janeiro for us, uh, bring us uh, in the good spots where it is safe and nobody can uh, steal the equipment or damage it. And um, about the equipment, so uh, helicopter video we, we shot there and you saw it originally taken in 12k so we use for that our own stabilized gimbal uh, with a GoPro 6 uh, on board on this uh, with a stabilizer on it um, and for ground shooting we mainly used uh, the, the sorry this uh, small okay middle uh, camera uh, it's Insta360 Pro 2. And of course, afterwards, we did a lot of post production because we need to make the sky look beautiful, to remove some uh, stitching errors, to remove uh, uh, some seams and optical flows uh, uh, errors that uh, generated by, uh, by software. And about software, we usually use um, Mystica, Mystica VR, and Mystica Boutique. Uh, Mystica for stitching and Mystica Boutique for uh, post-production and for color correction. Plus, we use the original uh, Insta Stitcher because it's doing very good in some, um, let's say, controlled conditions where you know what to expect from camera and from other things uh, uh, at the location. So, let's say, if you totally sure that the people will not come too close to the camera and the optical flow will not um, ruin the image uh, so we, we definitely will use the Insta camera okay um, so what else um, I also wanted to share uh, some information about my team maybe it also will uh, make you think over some other questions uh, that you want to know about us and to know how we are doing um, uh, creating the video and how we're planning the trips and so on and so on plus of course I want to to show um, the rest of my team who is behind the scenes who is doing uh, a lot of job for you guys to see all these images and all these uh, videos on our channels okay let me uh, show on my screen the presentation so it's gonna be several slides they shouldn't be uh, too much boring for you um, and um, I will show you the team and uh, what Airpana is doing and uh, how we're doing uh, all of the things uh, on our website. Okay, 
I will switch again to uh, the screen demonstration. Okay, screen, and uh, let me start the presentation. Yeah. So yeah, this is me in Tokyo, and I was wearing the new Skywars. Uh, they launched this head, uh, these headsets uh, um, last year, so they can play back 8K. So Air Product Company or Air Product Team is all about 360, 360 photographs and video. We are mainly specializing on aerial shooting, and we are founded on 2006. Uh, and this is uh, my team. So, as you may see, uh, we are all wearing the beautiful t-shirts. If you like one of those, you can also order some, uh, some of them on our website. And we are shooting 360 content. We are doing this teaching and post-production and programming and everything you see on our website by, our, by ourselves. So, those guys who were in the previous image, uh, they did everything like that. And for this, we use the, everything that we, we can get to, to bring the cameras into the sky. The military helicopters, the big helicopters, the small one, the commercial one. We started shooting uh, from the big helicopters, but now we mm, switched a half or maybe even a little bit more to the drones because it's uh, easier to carry and to bring some places where there is uh, no uh, any other uh, sources of uh, bringing camera to the um, to the sky. So, I mean, no helicopters or no hot air balloons or no even zeppelins. And this, by the way, a very good project uh, we done with the NetWind, our friend uh, Denis Efremov, and we bring the camera to stratosphere, almost to 35 kilometers up to the sky, uh, near space. And of course, we use the different types of uh, gear. Uh, I will tell about them later and show in my hands. Uh, that's the rigs uh, from the DSLR or mirrorless cameras, which we can uh, attach to anything which is moving, even to the tanks. And uh, since we love very much to shoot and to decide uh, and to solve some technical problems with the cameras and with uh, some. Uh, technically complicated types of shooting, well, of course, we're shooting underwater as well. And we like to work with animals, with the wild uh, animals, with the home animals, and uh, with national parks. So we're collaborating uh, with different uh, national parks around the world. Oh yeah, I haven't mentioned that we also have, uh, uh, let's say, outsourcers. <laughs> Some nice... Uh, video operators from China, from Panda base in the uh, city of Chengdu. Uh, yeah, but this video was too much shaky to publish them on our channel. And yeah, I mentioned before that we're using uh, the stabilized gimbal. This is the previous model with the GoPro 4. Uh, but now we're using with the GoPro 6 and they of course can be replaced by GoPro 8. But since we have more than 20 of those, uh, we use GoPro 6 at the moment. And this is uh, the very good example of about the post-production. So if you are interested in the post-production, please write me a message that, okay guys, tell me something, how you do the magic. Because this is the raw footage and this is the uh, half, let's say, the one step post-produced post uh, the video. But at the end, we are trying to reach as beautiful image as possible, and this is how it usually looks on our website. So this uh, almost 95% or 99% without any stitching errors and very nice colors. And I also have this second example, I think. Ah, no. Not this time, not in this presentation. And I got a lot of questions about uh, what is your business model or how you get the money to travel and to, to publish all these videos. So I can say that, uh, well, mostly we are acting as a photo stock or a video stock. So we are selling the license or to our videos, uh, I mean, of our videos to, to the clients. And who are they? Mm. Oh, okay, sorry, missed that. Uh, so this is the, the places that we um, travel during the last uh, 10 or even already 13 years. Um, and yeah, we are publishing the new virtual travel every Wednesday. 
uh, every week on our website. Don't miss it. And who are the partners and the clients? So main, mainly this is IT companies, advertising agencies, press and news agencies, those who actually need uh, 360 content on, for their website, for their products, for the portal and, and websites and so on and so on and so on. And here is the uh, shortly the slide with our main partners and the, uh, the the partners who helps us with equipment for example we are also uh, okay okay yeah <laughs> uh, we're also cooperating with the uh, with the Sony cameras uh, with the Sony Russia they're providing us uh, some equipment if we need to do the shooting with the cameras uh, of course we are um, we're doing this is the insta things. 360 pro 2 the ultimate tool the for professional VR filmmaking. And we are also ambassadors of this com company as well. Um, digital domains and different types of cinemas who are using our content uh, to showcase them as documentaries in their cinemas. We created a lot of applications um, like that. And we're publishing the books. And we're doing the volunteering and teaching the people uh, in the schools and uh, in, in, in other uh, institutions. Okay, that's supposed to be a little bit boring, so I'm switching back to the stream. Uh, sorry if I made you. Oh, uh, yeah. So here I go again. Okay, let me check the messages. Maybe you you have something already. Okay, hello, hello. Um, yeah. And getting back to the equipment, to the most, uh, to the parts that are uh, usually asked uh, by. <laughs> yeah, I told you guys. Uh, here, I, I will repeat once again. Um, I'm I'm talking today uh, to you and asking you to bring some uh, to to ask me some questions because this is my first ever stream uh, at Aeropano channel and we are uh, first time actually. Uh, uh, coming towards you to, to our audience and we really really do not know uh, what is most interesting for you and but we really want to know that so if you you, you want to ask uh, just come and get and uh, I will tell uh, next time or answer these questions right now and uh, okay and uh, what else I want to say about some uh, some equipment that we use. So the easiest way uh, to start shooting 360 is uh, the cameras like this. Um, the small one, this is the Insta One uh, X, but there is the same cameras from GoPro, it's GoPro Max, and we usually have uh, all of them. Uh, as I told you, I'm now doing stream from, uh, from my apartment, from my house. And I don't don't have uh, all the range of equipment that we have, only some part of it. And uh, for filming, we also use uh, cameras, uh, the big cameras like this, like an Insta Titan. Uh, I think the biggest and the heaviest that we have. We also use the smaller um, Insta Pro 2. And we doing the, the commercial shooting we mostly do with these cameras because uh, very easy to stitch and it has the very big overlapping and uh, uh, really point and shoot uh, but with a professional camera. Plus, uh, we also shoot the 360 panoramas from the drones like this. Uh, this is a Mavic Pro 2. As you know, the Mavic Air 2 uh, was released several days ago and um, but, and tomorrow there will be a presentation of DJI Matrix uh, 300 M300. It's also a promising drone for the professional. And by the way, you see here, there is the small gimbal here, and you can attach any small point and shoot camera like the Insta One X over here, or the anything. Maybe even uh, the new Candel uh, 8K camera. Uh, plus, of course, we're using, uh, let me show you, the Nikon cameras uh, for the complicated conditions like maybe at night or in the very strong frost. Uh, and of course, the Sony cameras like this. Uh, and of course, we have the combination with the 
three go uh, three Sony cameras. Sorry guys, there should be another one, but I didn't want to uh, to change the lens. So it should be like this. See how big it is. And using this uh, piece of gear, we can get a 12K uh, night time lapse with the stars uh, and with the Aurora uh, Northern Lights on them. And if we need to move the cameras, we also have the small dollies like this. Um, it can roll down on a very flat floor or it can roll down on the table. So sometimes if you need to shoot in um, uh, the meeting rooms with a long, long, long table, it also helps. Uh, and it can even bring, uh, it can even uh, hold the camera, uh, Insta Pro 2 camera. Last of course, we have uh, uh, the Noxon dolly uh, that allows us to put the camera on the very long line and it can the camera will be attached for it the camera will be attached over here let's say like this but without the, the mapo and it will uh, drive over the linen with the remote control and to show all the equipment that we have we use the different types of uh, uh, demonstration tools so we have a, a lot of different skywars uh, uh, Skywars headset, they support a 8K video, so you can literally take the 8K file uh, with the 8H264 codec, uh, 8K with a 150 megabits per second, and download it here and it will play back. Even my MacBook Pro cannot do this, and this uh, headset can. And of course we have a different one, it's also a Pico headset. Uh, with this uh, headset, uh, and installed a uh, VSB player, you can also play back 8K even on this headset or even 12K, but it's a little bit tricky. You need to double tap uh, to zoom uh, 12K video, and uh, but you have to try it, you better try. Okay, maybe I can also pick up some questions uh, I got here and answer. Okay, uh, under $1,000 uh, camera, what cam do you recommend? Well, I would say that it depends on the purposes you you want to use. If you want to put them on a drone and uh, and fly with it, uh, so I would say mm, the better one, uh, Insta One X, because that's the lightest one. If you're doing the action things and putting on the helmet and uh, doing sliding from the mountains, uh, well, you can use both Insta 360 or you can use the GoPro Max, for example. But if you need the 8K. That's not a perfect 8K, the same as Insta Pro 2 or Titan, of course. Uh, but you can try um, Kandao 8K camera. That's uh, they, they also deliver 8K, and if you downscale it uh, a little bit to, for example, 5K or 4K, that would be a very crispy and good image. Okay, what else do we have here? Mm, Airpano Insta 360 One X or Insta 360 Evo to start? Huh. Uh, well, I'm shooting only 360, so I don't need uh, a part of it. Uh, but if you use to GoPro, for example, and you want some action, or you don't need a full 360 but only 180, you may try to, to go to Insta Evo. But, um, well, honestly, I haven't used it uh, too much, and I, I, I cannot 100% guarantee that it will suit you. Oh, by the way, I have this small, oh, this uh, small toy. Uh, who knows this? Uh, what is this? Can you write it here? Okay, let me check. Okay, uh, drop your answers. What is this? What camera is this? Да, да, мы русские пацаны. Все нормально. Я просто рассказываю сегодня на английском. Потом могу рассказать на русском тоже. Okay. Um, uh, have one X must buy one air or wait to buy an 8K camera. Oh, <laughs> well, again, um, it depends on what 
uh, project are you going to use? If it is uh, for a home uh, usage, uh, to shoot your family uh, or to shoot some small project that you're going to show to uh, YouTube audience, to your friends, and they are not bringing you the money or the budget, and the clients do not have the requirements, that you need 8K. So uh, don't worry about the camera you have. So 1X uh, should be enough uh, for the next uh, year or so. Uh, it's better concentrate on some tricky things, uh, how to mount it on a helmet or, I don't know, bring it uh, uh, into your car or move it with a dolly or any other tricky things. Uh, making a good scenario or storytelling, that, that, mm, that is, uh, I would say, much better than trying to get this 8K. Because uh, when you get 8K, you also need to upgrade your computer, or, or if you have a very uh, powerful one, it still needs extra time to render 8K. So it's four times uh, actually bigger than 8K. Um, and mm, honestly, um, well, it's still a little bit complicated to do everything with the 8K so the computer, the storage, um, the publication and so on and so on and so on um, again if you if it is not critical for you to shoot in 4K I better um, recommend you to concentrate on scenarios on uh, what you're shooting uh, maybe on post-production on uh, voice recording or audio recording uh, on these things uh, okay, 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 what else? Uh, what is a good cheap headset? Ha! Huh. Well, I think that uh, if you want a really cheap one, that's a cardboard with your, <laughs> with your cell phone, but, uh, um, but everything which is on the, or what is on the market, uh, but also a little bit now specialized. So if you want to play the games, uh, of course Oculus Quest that should be the best solution. If you just want to buy the headset to watch one or two times the video and to show to your family, uh, only video, not the play in games, uh, the action games. So maybe Oculus, uh, Oculus Go or um, some Chinese headsets like Pico VR, uh, if you can get them at your place. They're also very good and also very reliable. Um, but if you, let's say, need to showcase the 8K video to your clients, uh, so I would recommend the Skywars. Um, okay. Um, okay. It is Instago. Okay. Andrew Titkov. Andrei Titkov. Uh, <laughs> That's totally right. That's Instago. The first time I saw this uh, little small toy, um, <laughs> I was really surprised because it has no button actually, only one at the back. Uh, but you can play with it. I mean, if you play only once, it will record the video. Or you can also program to take one photograph or um, shoot a time lapse or hyperlapse. Uh, and since it's shooting uh, 180 by 180, you can uh, then render it or download it from it with the application on your cell phone uh, with a vertical for stories or horizontal or even the square. It's so great. Uh, well, I usually use it uh, for a family shooting or f shooting uh, backstage uh, when we are at a good location and I don't want to miss uh, some nice shots. You can even shoot like this or like that. So this is... Uh, 100 by 180 and uh, it covers everything so you can crop uh, photographs or video out of it later on. How much storage do you use uh, for all these footage? Do you keep all the raw footage? Yeah, we do and we keep the raw footage uh, since the early beginning, since 2006 and I have uh, so many um, hard disk drives that's like a shelf like this. Plus, of course, I have the Synology rate uh, with the 32 terabytes and uh, another one with the 64 terabytes. And now we are using also the GCU as well. Uh, so it has almost unlimited, um, well, in, in terms of storage space, unlimited. But in terms of quantity of files, uh, the one, um, 
remote disk, uh, they have a limit. But uh, you can have as many uh, disks uh, as you want. So the GSU for us, that's a backup for the hardware, for the hard disk drives. And we usually triple all the, story, uh, all the materials, all the raw footage that we have. So I copy to my disk, uh, the, we also copy it to GCU, then we also copy it to Synology, and maybe also keep the final and a little bit source images, uh, sorry, source uh, video files at the stitching uh, crew department as well. Okay, finally I got the questions, okay. <laughs> uh, how much, okay, that was already answered. And what do you think about uh, binaural audio? For 360 video, have you tried some software like a Facebook 360 special audio? And what do you think about the complementation of 360 video and binaural audio? Uh, well, honestly, I'm, I'm traveling a lot and I visit I'm visiting uh, several conferences each year, except this one, of course. Um, and I took in my hands uh, so many different devices and I talked to the studios and to the people, uh, freelancers who is uh, doing the special audio recording and special audio uh, post-production and sound design. And I also wanted to try with uh, our channel, but uh, since uh, only the Facebook and a little bit uh, YouTube uh, support this technology is really really hard to deliver it to to the audience plus a lot of people are watching it from the uh, cell phones and uh, they even switch off the music because uh, if you're watching it in the public areas or in the offices they don't want to be, uh, they don't want to disturb other people and they switch off the music uh, not talking about the concentration and uh, understanding that the spatial audio is something that worth uh, doing it. It brings like another 50% uh, to the experience that you you see in the headset when you're rotating the head and the music and the sounds and everything around you um, add to all your experience and even if you're like watching it in the headset uh, and someone calling you from the back you hear it like from the back so you turn turn back and there's also a kind of a manipulation of, uh, of the viewer uh, how to bring his attention to the back, to the left, to the right or in case of shooting uh, the waterfalls uh, we're doing this as well plus, yeah, we, we did be, uh, say special audio, a uh, four channel audio um, tests on our website uh, 10 years ago when we did the 360 panorama so when you're rotating um, panorama with a waterfall. As I remember there was Iguazu Falls. Um, we did the programming in Carpano and uh, as soon as you watch to the forest uh, you will see the sounds of the birds uh, but when you turn the, uh, turn the field of view to the waterfall you start hearing the sounds of water. Yeah that was uh, very good but right now it takes so much time especially with the 360 video and so, many, so much to big budgets for that that uh, for us uh, that actually in the business wise uh, make no sense to to spend the money and the time uh, for special audio at the moment but let's say hopefully uh, in the future we will, we will do uh, much more on this okay как с помощью пика ваше видео на youtube okay that's the question in russian uh, I don't even know how to do to answer that. It's supposed to be answer in Russian, but that maybe not fair to the audience. Okay, Vladislav Novikov, I will try to answer this in English, but uh, later on, if you want, you can ask me in Russian as well. Um, ah, ah, okay. I will ask the guys from Pico because uh, I actually haven't watched them through the uh, through YouTube channel. Sorry about this guy. Okay, what was the most beautiful location in your, uh, your film? Ha! Barat. Uh, okay, that's a complicated question because how can you compare, or me, uh, how can I compare when you're flying with a helicopter, actually inside the helicopter over 
uh, Manhattan, for example, with a low altitude, right? Like scratching the roofs of the uh, of the buildings, and uh, for example, shooting stars in the Sahara Desert, or standing in front of the erupting volcano, or the largest, uh, the biggest waterfall. That's so different. Uh, well, well, honestly, I love travel, and I love uh, a different location, a different places. Um, and plus, of course, when you're traveling, it also depends on the circumstances, uh, uh, depends on the company, uh, depends on the people who you are with uh, at these places. So if it is a very good company, it adds plus 100% to your emotions, to your um, to the places you, you're, you have visited. And uh, of course, you can watch uh, or see the beauty of uh, a landscape from the mountain top. But just imagine if you have the people who are loving or your friends, you can just say, look, look there, <laughs> how beautiful it is. That's sharing the, your emotions uh, that, again, adds uh, plus 50% uh, to the emotions that you got from the place. Uh, so for me, I like the nature, I like the big cities. Uh, well, among the cities, I like very much uh, Rio de Janeiro. Uh, since this is a topic and plus uh, my one of my personal favorites because it's very warm there and there are a lot of people with uh, different uh, skin colors with his skin tones and uh, they all wearing the swimming dress or at least in Copacabana the biggest beach the longest beach there and the most popular and uh, that's a feeling of summer and the party all the time you're in the city Yes, uh, in, in the business cities like Moscow or Tokyo or uh, New York or other, the very busy and the overpopulated cities uh, which mostly concentrated on the business things, on uh, money and so on, that's uh, a little bit, and plus they are more to the north, uh, that's a different feeling. But in Rio de Janeiro I want to party uh, all the time, 24 hours, that's so beautiful in there. Okay, um, I can see behind you Pro 2 and Titan. Do you think Titan is really worse for the high value regarding the noise and dark areas and the resolution? Okay, guys, yeah, about the Titan. So next week uh, or so, I will try to to, to do, um, um, how to say, the large extensive video about the Titan. Uh, how do we use it, uh, what do we shoot with it, um, what settings do we use, how do we do stitching, um, and all other things. And, and I also want to bring uh, some, some test uh, videos that we shot with the Titan. Uh, but answering uh, shortly to your question, first, uh, this is a very expensive camera. If you have the money for this, well, it's good for you, but if you're not, uh, if you're doing the business, your private business, or you're entrepreneur, uh, okay, the, the shooting 360 guy, uh, it's better to rent it. So I can rent it for one day or two days, and it wouldn't be expensive, uh, extremely expensive. Uh, you just need to include this cost in, in, in the contract uh, that you're uh, doing with your uh, client. So. I don't think that once everyone need to buy it. Um, the second question: uh, Does it worth? Yes, it, it worth. Uh, so the quality of the image is uh, very comparable to the quality of mirrorless Sony cameras. So it, it is very good and very uh, low noise uh, video. I will show you. Really, I, I shot it already with the sky, uh, night sky, and we shot in the dark uh, studio. Uh, some test samples and I will share with it with you. Okay, what else do we have here? Uh, what the most difficult country to shoot in terms of bureaucracy? Ah, at the moment actually a lot of countries are uh, very um, bureaucratic in terms of getting permits. Uh, but how is better to say? Well, sometimes uh, uh, it can be a straightforward uh, route. So if you need to shoot in, in Europe or in the United States, you just need to follow all the rules and most likely you will get permit. But in, in the countries where, like uh, Arabic countries or India or um, 
maybe other countries like that in, in Africa that's hard to find the right person or even the right department who you need to address your application and then you need to invent different types of uh, ways of different of getting permits and there are a lot of funny and uh, strange stories but in general I would say if you want to shoot somewhere uh, with all your heart with all your passion and uh, you're working hard uh, sometimes uh, your fortune uh, the luck it just coming upon you and you got the call from a known person who is saying that okay I can help you with uh, such and such permits if you want and that's exactly what you want and uh, that that happened with us uh, several times um, <clears throat> but answering the question as it is so for me the comp the most complicated stuff was in Egypt and we even uh, got some problems with the police and with the military guys but at the end we sorted out and we just paid and got the official papers for shooting and they even bring us the tea on the shooting place and near the pyramids the hot tea <laughs> okay I'm working learning Spanish much respect to anyone learning speak another language uh, I'm working on learning Spanish okay uh, it's yeah, también hablo español un poquito. Uh, estudio en la universidad eh, 10, no 10, uh, 20 años uh, pasado. <laughs> so my Spanish is not very good, but still it is. Uh, I remember something. Были ли убиты за монитором? Смотрели ваши видео? Ракурс со стороны перевод. Поломушка решил, что дело у меня фанатный фокусник. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah. The most difficult experience to record 360 you had. Mm, how 360 cameras capture all around them. Ah, okay. Uh, the most difficult experience to record in 360. Um, that was the shooting of uh, erupting volcano in Kamchatka. Mm, there was uh, the very high, high altitude, uh, about 5,000 meters above the sea level. Uh, there was a uh, few oxygen, so my shooting crew, I wasn't there actually in the helicopter, but my shooting crew, uh, they were in the helicopter and they felt a lack of uh, the oxygen, so the they, they moves were very slow and they might not so concentrated. Plus, uh, the ca all, almost all the cameras that we have, they refused to work in, in that conditions. Um, the Sony cameras, the Nikon cameras, um, the video cameras, at the end, it, uh, only GoPro cameras work but only half of them and when we were passing by the actually the eruption with the helicopter one of the cameras is switched off so we have uh, only partially video but Ivan Roslikov he is the stitching guy in, in our team he did the magic and he just patched uh, not working cam camera and this year Sergei Romansov the technical director and Stanislav Sedov uh, he's um, drone operator, drone pilot, as we say, they travel to Laplandia, Lapland, uh, in Finland. And there, there was not actually very frosty, only maybe minus 30 or so, but there was very wet, wet there, uh, very humid. Uh, and plus there was a wind, and that was very um, dramatic for the for the equipment. Uh, all the cameras they simply refused to work. The drones, the GoPro cameras, uh, the Sony cameras, then even the Nikon cameras they they wasn't they didn't work very good. Uh, so the combination of very low temperatures and the humidity and the high altitude they very very hard influenced the equipment. So and when the equipment doesn't work, you feel very uncomfortable. Uh, but personally, yeah, usually uh, when you travel in the, hot in the countries with the hot temperatures, uh, with the wet climate, it also influences you. Uh, we, we, me, I'm from, from Moscow, from Russia, and we feel very good in frosty weather, uh, but somewhere in the tropics, in, in Africa or in South Asia, it's uh, complicated for me as well. <coughs> there was a question, uh, how the cameras, 360 cameras are shooting all around them. So I will show you with the example 
of uh, so as you may notice here uh, the camera has uh, one two three four five six lenses uh, and six sensors inside so these lenses they you see they are very wide angle uh, like bubbles and they cover a lot of the surface uh, um, not the surface but the space around them and uh, they they capturing the video uh, all these direction from here to here and then uh, it allows us to take all these six video streams combine them uh, into one and do the stitching and uh, do the 360 video so all around you and Okay, let me put it back. Just put it down. Okay. Be very careful with this, because it can fall down. And if you use the small camera like this, uh, it has only two lenses, but it's also, you see, as a bubble here, half bubbles or half sphere. And it also has the wide angle lens uh, which covers even more than 180 degrees so it's shooting this lens for example it's shooting not only here but a little bit on the back of it and the same for this lens and then at the end you got the fully spherical video so it's like you're getting inside the bubble or inside the sphere or inside of uh, of the earth and look around you and you see the panoramic image all around you okay how much time do you usually need to record the video? Oh well, that depends on the uh, on the project and about uh, and on the video that we are shooting. If it is a concert, it's just the, the same time as a concert. But if it's shooting something natural like sunset or sunrise, um, it's not so easy and uh, uh, not not so easy to say. Usually, we start recording the video some hour or half an hour before the sunset or maybe one hour before the sunset depending on the clouds that we have and finishing a little bit later uh, but that's most likely for the time lapses uh, but in terms of um, the other types of shooting you know, if you come to the waterfall and you see that the clouds are beautiful the waterfall is uh, very well lightened and not so many people around you or not at all just maybe one, two, three, five minutes uh, to show uh, to the people and to record that this is how the space looks like. So and I would say starting from one minute to several hours or one day if you're shooting the time lapse. So this is the time for filming. But if we come, let's say, to Rio de Janeiro, for example, we need at least one week uh, to, to travel to different spots, uh, to different uh, nice-looking uh, sightseeing places, uh, like, for example, cathedrals, uh, beach, uh, the Corcovada mountain, uh, Ipanema beach, and, and so on, so many different places, and record the video there, 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 and then do the... Um, um, montage let's say cut of this uh, parts into one documentary video so usually if we shoot uh, one city it's about one week or so which country did you like mm, the most oh that's johnny this is the same question as i answered before that's very hard to say uh last year i discovered uh, Tok uh, japan and i like this country very much I would say that if I'm getting older, uh, maybe I want to spend my elder days uh, there. Uh, the year before, I discovered the China, or two years before, with the help of our um, partner there, Jasmine Li, and I like China very much. So, so many different natural places uh, and. Um, the animals or the national parks with the animals and the big city full of energy and full of uh, people uh, that's also uh, a very very interesting and as I told you I like the Rio de Janeiro very much because it's uh, very sunny and um, tropical and warm place 
So, I mean, I'm optimist and uh, optimistic person, and uh, any place I come, I usually prepare to go there, and I, I have my expectations, and it's really, really hard to to break them or not to to get the emotions that I wanted to get. Да, да, я русский человек. Всем привет. Я говорю по русски. Mm, one air uh, with air. Do, do you try? Mm, okay, digging dog uh, dog studios. Asking, do you try the Insta 361R aerial with a drone? No, I haven't tried it. No, we supposed to get this camera uh, somewhere around January, but my uh, my trip to to China was cancelled, and I cannot get my uh, Kandao camera. Uh, which shoot 8K, and I cannot get my uh, Insta one uh, Insta R camera as well. So it's stuck there. Okay, you are do such an awesome job. Uh, jobs. Thank you very much. I'm from Brazil. Nice video. Okay, uh, DR drone. Uh, be sure we will continue. So our plan is uh, to divide the, the videos uh, into several parts because they, they cover different places. One was about Corcovado Mountain and the Christ the Redeemer statue. The second part will be about um, uh, beaches uh, of uh, Rio de Janeiro, Ipanema, Capacabana, Leblon and uh, the last one, uh, Tijuca. Um, so that will be the next uh, part. Um, and the last part will be about the city, about the stairs of uh, Celaron and um, uh, about the bridge and you will see everything from, from above and from the ground as well. Uh, did you try the Insta one? Uh, uh, can you do 360 on live stream and why why not? Ha! Uh, well, uh, that's the first time I ever do streaming and that was a little bit hard uh, even to manage everything here. Uh, that's the first part. The second is that while well, we are locked at our houses, uh, this is my house and I also am not sure that my family will be happy to show up <laughs> everything all around me. Uh, but uh, I'll try maybe on my backyard. Uh, some of uh, the next streams uh, will be in 360. Plus, another thing is that uh, even YouTube, even uh, the Google, they told that they reduce a little bit uh, wide um, uh, bandwidth uh, during the Corona stuff, uh, so that um, many people around the world they, they have they, they reduce the speed a little bit. So maybe a 360 video in a very high quality will not be um, so will not be supported by um, low. Uh, will it look very good uh, with people with the low uh, channels at their houses? Okay, uh, can you do? Okay, did you get the idea to do what you're doing now? Did you get the idea to do? To do? Ah, how did you get the idea? Ah, uh, well, uh, to answer this question, I need to get back to. 2003 or 2006 because uh, Airpana that's a group of uh, friends uh, the photographers the landscape photographers and uh, we were traveling we used to travel uh, to remote places just for fun because I was working at the office and uh, the friends of mine they were also worked at their offices and uh, when we had our vacations we we took the cameras the tripods and travel there that was another uh, one guy Oli Gabanyuk he's the founder of uh, Airpana project and once in, back in 2005 he met uh, another guy, Andrew Zubitz and uh, Andrew was a very good technician guy who did knew the, the care panel, uh, the programming, the teaching, uh, pretty good uh, at that time and Oleg traveled a lot so uh, there was a very fruitful combination of two, uh, two guys uh, one was passionate with the photography and another was uh, with the technician, uh, technical stuff. And then they, they first uh, shot 360 panorama. And uh, and by the way, one of the first hour shooting was in Rio de Janeiro as well from the helicopter. And uh, at that time, uh, they wanted to share, uh, but they didn't know how to do that. And um, I mean, there was no social networks, there was no YouTube, um, Facebook, 
at that time and none of the uh, ways how to share 360 technologies 360 panoramas with the with the audience with your friends and they decided to make the air panel and uh, after that uh, a lot of people joined the team so it's around 10 12 of us uh, working at the air panel team and uh, for each of us uh, some different reasons bring us in one place but uh, the most beautiful or the most important reason is uh, to show the beauty of our world in 360 technology uh, that people can cannot be limited by by the the cameraman uh, where to look uh, with the audience with those who cannot travel or uh, or want to, to see the destination they're going so this uh, love with, to, to, to share the, the travels, the places, uh, the emotions that we have in, in the 360 format uh, brings uh, all our team together and uh, still keeping us uh, together and we, we keep posting actually uh, if we think, uh, if we think uh, around every week we, pu we publish a new virtual travel since 2006 so it's so many weeks uh, passed from that time uh, and we're still doing this, continue doing this, and everyone can do go to our website and watch it for free in all these places. So I don't know they, they how <laughs> how we did uh, come to this. Just want to share. Um, when you're coming to US, of course, after all the pandemic over, but any particular city you have in mind, huh? <laughs> Well, honestly, there was not uh, so many U.S. destinations uh, at our plans because um, uh, this year we actually wanted to go and cover 10, 10 places uh, in China and we concentrated mostly on this. Um, but everything fell with all the trips, they, they were cancelled. So um, maybe next year we will go, we'll continue shooting in China. Plus, we also have a very good partners. We get them um, in, from Japan, and I almost flew in Japan uh, last month, but I canceled the trip like few hours before the departure because of the Corona stuff. And uh, the second country that we're going for a shooting, uh, that definitely will be Japan. And next year, maybe we'll go to, to the United States as well. But if you have, let's say, any ideas or want to make a cup production or invite us to your city, like, go ahead, we, we can do that. I mean, we do all the shootings that we're doing, we're doing on our own money, on our own budgets. So as soon as we get the client uh, and some money, we spend them on the next travel, on the next shooting uh, to show you guys uh, the new piece of uh, beautiful video or the panoramic uh, photographs. And um well if you want let's say to invite us and to split some costs or you know how to split the cost or reduce them by traveling with you or with your partner or you want to co-produce some video with us and uh, cover some some stuff or some money that totally helpful for us and we'll be glad to do that with you so actually we, we cooperating and do the co-production with the national parks so they cover our traveling costs and the living costs and they provide us the permits to shoot at their territory and get the access to the animals to the uh, natural uh, sightseeing places and this is how we also also continue shooting with a low cost uh, while still sharing with the people and with the national parks our footage and the video and the photographs okay it's almost nine and the, the stream is supposed to finish at nine so, um, I will answer all the questions that I haven't answered uh, this time uh, with the text. And thank you very much for joining, for watching, and for uh, being our audience. Um, I wish you very good and safe time. Um, in the places, please stay at home and take care of your family uh, in such uh, times with the corona and virus stuff. Uh, okay, bye-bye. Take care.